Welcome to the Fibre Bound Podcast. This is episode 25. My name is Ali and I am coming to you today from Adelaide, Australia, where it is a beautiful sunny winter's day today. It is Saturday the 10th of August and we are nearing the end of winter and spring is in the air. I have washing out on the line today outside and I am so excited about the sunshine, about things growing again. I'm starting to see little buds on my fruit trees. They haven't blossomed yet, but any day now, I think. I live here with my husband, our two sons, and our dog, Shorty. We also have a few chickens that I like to talk about and share about occasionally as well. But this podcast is predominantly about knitting. It is about the things that I love to make. It is about the things that I want to make and the things that come into my house and take over my yarn room. <laughs> There's lots of yarn, lots of coffee, and I think we need to just get into it today because I do have a lot to share with you. It has been quite a few weeks now since my last episode, my full format podcast episode, but I did check in with you a couple of weeks ago to share with you about my recent trip to Bendigo. My last episode talks all about that and um, feel free to check that out if you wish. Before we do get started, um, I just wanted to let you know that you can find me online on Instagram as Fiberbound and I am also on Ravelry as Alipay where I try to update all of my project details as regularly as I can. Uh, the links to all of my project pages relating to the things that I talk about today will be in the description box below. I don't think we're calling it a description box anymore, but that's what I still think of it as. Uh, if you click more and more again, I think, down below or to the side, depending on what device you're watching this on, um, you'll be able to see a list of links to all of the project pages that I talk about, the makers that I mentioned, the yarn dyers, the bag makers, and any other podcasts I may mention throughout today's episode. I have quite a few finished objects to share with you today, and I also have a few amazing whips that I have been loving working on. I also wanted to talk to you about two extra things that I would really love to start very soon. So a little bit of dream knitting and a few acquisitions that I've made. Aside from the Bendigo ones that I talked about in the last episode, there have been things that have coming in in the mail over the last couple of months that I didn't include that in that episode because they weren't purchased on that trip. So let's get into the nitty goodness and it is all knitting today. Sometimes I talk about crochet, sometimes a little bit of sewing, everything is knitting today. So I hope you have a beverage of your choice. I have a coffee in my Emma Bridgewater Hearts mug. This has been my recently acquired mug that I am obsessed with. Actually, I've had it for a little while, but I've only just started using it. So love this mug. Love all of Emma Bridgewater's mugs. If you haven't seen them before, I'll link her down below as well. So let's get started with finished objects. The first finished object I will share with you today is what I am actually wearing. I did talk about this definitely in the last full episode, in episode 24, but I have finished it since then, which I am so excited about. This is the Gumnut Cardigan by Jane Bale of Mindful Making AU. She has a podcast as well, which is amazing, and I'll link that down below for you too. Uh, this is, as I said, the Gumnut Cardigan. Uh, Jane came out with a tea version of this pattern a couple of years ago and recently released the Gumnut Cardigan version. And I started this project as a test knit for Jane, but I was a bad test knitter and did not finish it in time. <laughs> We did communicate back and forth. Jane is a very good friend of mine. She was aware of what was happening at the time. So um, I am so grateful to Jane for allowing me the opportunity to test this for her um, and also being very gracious in my lateness. I started this project on the 7th of April this year and I finished it on the 13th of July. So that's around four months on the needles um, and it's mainly because I did work on other things in the meantime and I also hurt my hand a little bit so that slowed me down a little bit but that's all fine now I think that was just trying to knit too much. 
This cardigan is knit in two yarns and they're held double or held together. It's always a funny term, held double. Um, I used the, the main yarn is Yarn Traders Skinny Sock Base and this is in the colorway English Rose. And I used just over two and a half skeins of that main color. That yarn is a fingering weight four ply yarn and it is a light, it's considered a light fingering. There are 424 meters to 100 grams in one of those skeins and I used just under three of those. I held that yarn together with the Drops Kid Silk Mohair which is a 75 20 75% mohair 25% silk base and it is 210 meters to 25 grams. I used just under six balls of that so um, I did have six balls in stash and I was a little bit worried that I may run out so I did actually borrow an extra ball from my mum who had some in her stash too just in case I needed it but I didn't need to go into that seventh ball. Sixth ball six balls was plenty for me. I knit the size two of this cardigan. I knit the body on a 3.5 millimeter needle and I did the ribbing on a three millimeter needle. I did have to go down needle sizes compared to the pattern. I did not meet gauge on the recommended needle size. It turns out I am a loose knitter. I didn't ever really know which one I was but the more garments I have made this past year or so the more I am realizing I am quite a loose knitter. The construction of this is really fun. I love the fact that it had no major finishing at the end except sewing on buttons, which there are quite a few buttons here. <laughs> but that's all right. It took me a couple of hours one Sunday night that I ended up sewing them on. Essentially, you start at the collar here and you do some, uh, I think it's one by one twisted rib to start with, and then you knit it top down. The sleeves are worked in the round as well. You can do that just after you split for the sleeves. You can do the sleeves before you do the body. I chose to do the body first and then I did the two sleeves at the end. I think in the last episode, I was just needing to do the sleeves. I think I had already bound off the body. I can't remember exactly. Or maybe I was very close to binding off the body in the last proper episode. But the fun thing is here that there's a button band. The button band is worked at the same time as the body. You work the button band and the body stitches on different size needles. So I used DPNs to hold the stitches and to knit the stitches when I got to them. But you're basically working it flat. You work one way and then you work back the other, but you're, you're working the button band rows every single time you do a pass. And I found that really lovely. And given that the majority of the body down here is stockinette, it gave a little bit of interest for me that I would be excited to get to that button band stuff because it meant I had to do something different. So I felt like body island was not a thing for me. Do you get body island? I find a stockinette in the round project so satisfying, but at the same time, sometimes I may get a little bit distracted if there's no other things to focus on when I'm working stockinette for ages. I found the button band to be a great little extra thing to focus on at the end of each of the rows. And it's rows, not rounds. I may have said rounds before, so used to working things in the round. But no, this is knit flat and um, yeah, it's great. Now another fun feature of this pattern is the slip stitch um, color work here. This is, this is mosaic knitting at the top uh, and it is really lovely to knit. I used a contrasting yarn for this and this was in some leftovers that I had from Louis and Lola who is a yarn dyer who was based in Tasmania, one of my favorite Australian yarn dyers. And um, this was left over from my slip extravaganza shawl, I believe. I cannot remember the colorway name now. Uh, I just had little leftover nuggets left and I don't know where the tag has gone from that particular ball. Absolutely amazing pattern. I did end up lengthening it a little bit just because I felt like my row gauge was out as I was knitting it. And because you need to have a certain amount of rounds rows between the buttonholes, 
the way it landed I needed to do an extra I've got an extra button on here for my size compared to the pattern so it is a little bit longer than probably it is anticipated I don't actually remember how much longer I'll, I'm, I might try to measure it after I finish recording and I'll pop it on the screen but I really love the fit of this I feel like this choosing the size 2 was the best choice because I am quite a loose knitter I tend to choose a size that's my size then my gauge changes halfway through knitting something and things can end up being a little bit more oversized than I would like whereas this I think fits me absolutely perfect I think it still has a couple of inches at least a couple of inches of positive ease here um, but I really like the way that it sits. I really like the feel of this. I love the fact that the sleeves turned out perfectly length um, and I followed the pattern for this as well. I don't think I made any adjustments on the sleeves. I'm just trying to think. It's been a, little, it's been a few weeks now since I finished this, but um, maybe I did make an adjustment to compensate for my row gauge. I might have actually done that. So I think what I would have done is for that last decrease, I would have adjusted um, the amount of rows I did. I think I did a few extra rows in between the last couple of decreases just to compensate for my row gauge being a little tighter than the pattern recommended. So whilst I tend to be a loose knitter, when I knit flat, I tend to overcompensate my pearls so I don't get any rowing out, which means that I end up knitting those a bit tighter. I learnt that from doing my uh, Radvent cardigan earlier this year, but for some reason didn't think about this. But having said all of that, the fit is perfect. I am so happy with how this turned out. <laughs> but it does mean that when I knit flat, my row gauge tends to be a little bit tighter than um, recommended in the patterns. So I do need to compensate for that a little bit. So yes, this is the Gumnut Cardigan by Jane Bale. Highly recommend this pattern. If you have three skeins of fingering weight yarn and some mohair in your stash, this is an amazing pattern. And three skeins for me for a size two was plenty. I think for a size three, that would have been enough as well because I'd only used 3.5 skeins, I think. Um, but yeah, definitely check for your size what the yarn requirements are. But for me, that was a really good pattern really nice to use stash yarn this has all been in my stash for a little while so it's beautiful to be able to wear it now and enjoy it outside of being hidden in the cupboard <laughs> so <laughs> that is fantastic i did wear this to bendigo when i went a couple of weeks ago three or four weeks ago now and jane and i actually wore ours together um, on the first day that we were in bendigo and it was really fun to be able to wear matching cardigans with the designer who is so talented and who I admire so much. So it was really wonderful. So the rest of my finished objects are all socks. Now this is all the socks together. <laughs> Actually, it's not all of them. I have one more. One more. Yeah, so lots of socks. Let's go through these relatively quickly. I do want to share about each of them because they are all a little bit different. So, uh, actually, yeah, they all knit slightly differently, so I will share them all. So my first finished pair of socks that I want to share with you today are these socks that I knit for my husband. They are so fun and everyone that sees them are like, wow, your husband will wear those? Yes, my husband will wear these. They will go in his boots. No one will actually see them except him when he's putting them on and taking them off. These are knit in West Yorkshire Spinners Color Lab DK weight sock yarn. Now I don't have, I do have a label for a different colorway with me. So let me let you know what this yarn is. So this is actually the label for the yarn that I used. It's West Yorkshire Spinners. Now it is 75% British wool, 25% nylon. It's a 150 gram ball, which is perfect for DK weight socks for my husband, because as you can see, 
he likes a long leg and he is sorry this has 337 meters and 300 or 367 yards per ball and this was in the colorway pop I believe I think it was called pop if that's wrong I'll pop it on the screen now I knit my husband's DK weight socks on a 48 stitch count on 3.25 millimeter needles I do all of my DK weight socks on 3.25s and I knit these on Chow Gu bamboo needles. I really wanted to try out the bamboo needles, so I picked up a set when I bought this yarn. I still have my hair in my nose. Apologies for scratching. I tried the bamboo 9 inch circulars for this sock, and I also picked up a 32 inch uh, fixed needle um, in the 3.25 millimeter or US 3. I think it's a US 3 size. Uh, for the uh, heel flap, the toe decreases, that sort of thing. I did really enjoy using those needles and have picked them up in the 2.25 millimeter size that I would knit my fingering weight socks in as well, but I haven't used those yet. But yeah, they were fun to try out. And I figured, I think I spoke about this, I think I spoke about this before. I feel like I'm repeating myself. Maybe I was talking to a friend. I wanted to try the bamboo needles maybe these were a work in progress last time oh, i'm so distracted i'm sorry uh i wanted to try them in case i ever uh travel internationally again uh, some international airlines don't allow needles on flights but they tend to be a little bit more relaxed with bamboo uh, compared to the metal needles i usually use so i thought i'd give them a go and they were lovely they were really nice to use I feel like my gauge may have changed slightly with them though. I feel like these are much looser than the pair that I knit for him before. But that could also be related to the fact that I hadn't used this yarn base. This yarn base is a little bit more rustic to the feel compared to a hand dyed sock yarn. So perhaps that is why. He hasn't tried these on yet. These were actually a present that I gave him uh, for our anniversary back in July. And I gave them to him and promptly took them back so that I could record and then didn't get a chance to record until now, a month almost and a half later. <laughs> so he will get them after this recording is finished and we'll see how they fit him. But he seemed quite happy with them when I gave them to him. So yeah, hopefully they fit. So that is the first pair. Now the second pair is a pair, sort of a standard pair that I would knit for myself. These are my rainbow and sprinkles socks and these are knit for me. So when I knit socks for myself, I use a 56 stitch count and these are fingering weight socks. So they are knit on a 2.25 millimeter or a US one needle. And I use Chow Gu red lace needles for these, I think. Did I? I did. I knit these on a nine inch circular needle, uh, except for the heel flap and the toe. So both of these pairs of socks have a heel flap and gusset, which is, um, I don't know if it's my preferred heel, but it's definitely one that I don't have to think about. I not had to refer to a pattern for heel flap and gussets in a long time. Uh, they, they come very easily to me now. It did take a while. This was not an overnight thing. I have been knitting socks for a few years now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so these were fun to knit. I did, I think, around usually 20 rounds for the 2x2 two two rib at the top. I like a long leg here. Now, I didn't talk about my husband's leg. He likes a long leg too. Um, I can't remember how many rows I did there, but it was 50-ish probably. For fingering weight socks, I would normally do around 60 rounds on the leg before I start the heel flap and gusset. And then I have a small foot. So my feet usually take from, from when I pick up for the gusset stitches, I usually do about 60 rounds for my foot. For my husband, I would do closer to 75 rounds on a fingering weight sock. He has a much larger foot than myself. Um, and then I do a rounded toe to finish that off. I don't think there's anything else to say about them other than they're really cute and I'm looking forward to wearing them, especially now that the days are getting sunnier. They definitely feel like a summery pair of socks. With the leftover yarn, so I cast those off and I had quite a bit of yarn left over. Um, 
I think it was a very generous skein of yarn. So these are the Skimmer Socks Revisited. It is a pattern by Sheila Toy Stromberg. And it is a shorty sock, a no-show shorty sock. So a very different construction compared to ones I've made before. Great for leftover yarn. I think this used around 26 grams of yarn for my size. Now I wear a 36 to a 37 European ladies size shoe. So I have quite small feet, quite narrow feet. Um, so yeah, I think I did knit the second size of these though. They have an extra small, a small, and then some other sizes that I can't remember. And I'm pretty sure I knit the second size, which is a small um, and the stitch count sort of resembled the 56 stitch sock that I would normally knit for myself which is why I chose that size. Um, I have worn them and they are amazing to wear. Now I followed the pattern exactly as written. This is a free pattern on Ravelry so you start off with, how did it start off? It started off with the toe. The toe starts with Judy's Magic Cast On and with some increases to get to the right stitch count so that's sort of, you start off here and then from memory you start working flat on the foot. You work flat for the foot duration until you get to the heel turn or the gusset. And there's some great instructions on short rows here. So there's some short rows that are included in the back of that sock. And then you end up finishing it off with a stitch, slip stitch heel flap. I think once you're done with that, you pick up to do the, the ribbing on the um, top of the sock. I think that's how it was done. It was a little while ago now, but it was a really fun knit. It was a construction that I'm not 100% used to. I haven't done exactly this type of shorty before. I have done other shorties. So the other ones I've done are journey socks, which are lovely too, but I actually think these ones fit me better. Um, they definitely don't slide down at all. I used stitch markers to mark my um, flat rows so that I could make sure I matched them up, even though this is a self-striping yarn and the stripes really tell you the matching because there were parts where you increased or decreased and then there were parts where you knit straight or flat um, I did use stitch markers and progress keepers to keep track of where I needed to do something different on the sock so that when I got to the second sock it was a really good visual cue for me to know that I needed to that that was the point that I needed to make a change uh, yeah I really enjoyed knitting these they were really super quick I took a little bit longer than I should have to knit these and mainly because I was distracted by other projects. But I started these on June 20th and finished them on the 7th of July. Realistically, I could have got them done within a couple of days, but it wasn't the only project I was working on, but they were really cute. And my last finished object is another pair of socks that I knit as part of Nitty Natty's Sock Week. And here they are. They are so amazing. I love this yarn. This yarn was such a joy to knit. Now again, this is a 56 stitch sock. I cast on, so I didn't talk about how I cast on before. I cast on using a German twisted cast on for all of my socks. I find it is the best cast on for me. It gives me a nice stretchy cuff. And I did a two by two rib. And then I thought I wanted to do something different with the mini that was included. This is the yarn I used for my socks. It is by Woolen Works. It is in the colorway Electric Horizon and the mini is called Shepherd's Delight, which is so pretty. They're both so pretty. Uh, this is an 80% extra fine superwash merino and a 20% nylon, 400 meters to 100 grams. And I absolutely love this colorway. I loved knitting it. It was so fun to knit. I considered doing a pop of color on my cuff with the mini and then just knitting it with the main color because this colorway is so beautiful. But I decided I wanted to try something different. I was so inspired after coming back from Bendigo 
and just being so happy about that trip and just feeling so overjoyed with the experience and my heart felt so full that I felt like you know what let's put some little hearts on this one <laughs> it was the first project I cast on when I got back and so I designed a little uh, chart a little heart motif and decided to just do a bit of color work on my socks and that was a lot of fun I did question my yarn choice a couple of times in terms of the background color and did try something else but that didn't work quite as nicely as I had hoped <laughs> so I went back and I redid these so um, yeah the color work I did a couple of times now a fun fact with color work uh, you need to be able to get your sock over the ball of your foot over your heel even so it is really important with color work socks that your tension is really loose for the uh, color work section so that your floats are loose enough that it will stretch over your heel so what i ended up doing i cast on with a 2.25 millimeter needle like i normally would and i did all of um, the, like the first stripe and the first parts of the white background on that same needle but when i got to the actual color work motif i change needle size to a 2.5 millimeter or a US 2 and what the first time I knit it I just knit it normally and tried to keep a nice loose tension and that was fine but was still a little tight so on the second sock I ended up knitting it inside out so as I was knitting it I was actually holding it so that the um, floats were on the outside so that gave the floats a little bit more room to go around and created a more stretchy uh, color work section there you can see my ends they are woven in I just haven't trimmed them yet I usually trim them once I wash the sock and I don't tend to wash my socks when they're for me until I've worn them I don't block socks otherwise unless they're a lace and I just want to show off the lace pattern but yeah these have not been blocked they've just been sitting on the sock blockers but once I wash them I'll cut off those ends but yeah a little trick if you're interested in knitting color work socks and you're finding your tension is a little bit tight which is easy it is easy to do um, I recommend knitting them inside out on a slightly larger needle to help improve that tension and increase that stretch so yeah these were really fun now I did knit these in a week these were part of Nitty Natty's sock week challenge which I may have already mentioned uh, so that challenge is to knit one sock in a week I actually ended up knitting both socks in about five days because I was loving this yarn and I had a little bit of time off of work after Bendigo so I had a little bit more knitting time and it was fantastic to be able to knit this and again slip stitch heel flap and a rounded toe same as the other pair but this yarn is just so pretty very excited to wear these now that I've shown you I don't think there was anything else I was meant to say about those but those are all of my finished objects let's move into my works in progress I'll start off with the oldest one that I haven't shown you before but it is one that I have I picked up after I finished this cardigan and I've been working on sporadically since then <laughs> um, but I did start this one in October of last year and you may recognize this it's the first time I'm showing it because uh, I wasn't a very good podcaster in 2023 so this is my geo gradient show <laughs> Let's move back in all of its glory so we have the first section that I completed during the knit along this was a mystery knit along by Stephen West and the second section that I finished during the knit along and then half of the third section which I finished last year sometime and I'm still working on the second half of that third section so when I picked this up um, after recording last that's where I started and so I haven't made a huge amount of progress but I've done a few repeats of this lovely slip stitch detail and yeah progress is happening my aim with this is to finish it before the next mystery knit along starts so that always happens in October sometime in September Stephen West will start revealing some uh, 
yarn options and yarn requirements for this year's knit along and I want this done well in advance of that so I feel like what are we August if I could get this done by mid-September that would be ideal I just have this to finish off this wing and then there's a border that goes along the bottom there are lots of ends most of which have been woven in through knitting but I might need to secure them a little bit more so I don't do the weave and Stephen method that Stephen suggests when I weave in as I go I use a bit more of a color work technique by sort of going under and over the uh, yarn that I'd like to lock in um, so yeah that's been a big time saver for me in terms of weaving in ends because it does it for me while I go. I don't have to go in and do too many ends at the end of a project, which makes things easier. Have made some progress on this. Now this is being housed in my crystal cap stitchery bag, which I love. Love this colorway so much too. And the yarns that I'm using for this project, I don't have the tags in this bag anymore, but let's see if I can remember exactly what they are. So this is the first colorway that I have. So this is color A and this is Finch Yarn Singles and Loving It Base and it's called On Point, I think. <laughs> I think that's the first one. If it's not, then this one is On Point. This is also by Finch Yarns. And this is either on point or just add frills. Now I've kind of lost track of which one is which. But that is colour B. Colour C is Cola Girl Collective's Scarlet Letter. One of my favourite reds ever. I'm not sure if it's coming up the right tone on this screen. It looks a lot warmer in colour than it does to me in real life. Uh, when, when I'm editing it may look different, but it's um, definitely a more of a um, cooler red rather than a warm red. Love this colourway so much. And the final colour is by Lovebird Lane. And this is in the colourway Netflix Binge. This was part of a mystery yarn club that I participated in in 2020 during COVID lockdowns and um, yeah it's on a sparkle base as well slightly slightly different base to the other three now these three are all on a singles base this last one is on a sock base and this is a 75% merino 25% sorry 20% nylon 5% stellina and it is also I think yep 400 meters per 100 grams in this one I was really happy that I was able to pull from Stash for last year's Knit Along and I'm loving this project. I just am not prioritizing it because I have so many other things I want to work on. But I am really happy that I got at least some done. I mean, that's that's not the worst. Now this Progress Keeper I'm keeping here is actually one that I made out of polymer clay a few years ago. So that's my GeoGradient MCAL. I'll t tell you about the needle size. Now I am needing these on a 3.75 millimeter. He's very loose, so I usually go up a needle size. So he must have. This must be written up for a 3.5 millimeter needle. I always uh, go up a needle size compared to his. I'm a little bit of a loose knitter, but Stephen West is a super loose knitter, and I always have so much yarn left over at the end of his MCALs that. I know it's safe to go up a needle size compared to what his pattern is written in and I always just am very happy with the fabric and the drape of that. And generally I like a fingering weight yarn on a 3.75 millimeter for a shawl. It's quite a nice gauge for me. So yeah, that is my geo gradient. So that's been fun to pull out of hibernation. <laughs> since I finished this cardigan. The next two projects I will share with you are housed in one of my favorite types of sock yarn, sock project bags even. So these are so cute. These are by Shans Yarns. I'll show you the front of that because it's got a little label there. These are by Shans Yarns and they are just the perfect little sock bag. They stand up, they don't take up much room. A sock project fits in there perfectly, as do a bunch of needles. Apparently I have a lot of needles in each of these bags. Now I'll talk about this one first. I picked this little bag up um, 
at Fiber Feast in March and have been loving using it. The other one was from Fiber Feast the year before. So the yarn is by Craft by Bella Store and it is in the colorway. <laughs> I'm so attached here. It's in the colorway Ogres Are Like Onions and it is the four ply sock yarn base, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It is 400 meters per 100 grams. Bella who dyes this yarn is local to me and I picked this out about a year ago this yarn to knit my son a pair of socks and I would have picked it out around this time last year-ish um, thinking oh I'll make him some birthday socks with it and then I never did. His birthday is right around the corner, he will be 20 on the 24th of August. I am amazed that I almost have a, I have an almost 20 year old. Uh, so yeah, I have made some good progress on these. I cast these socks on on the 3rd of July and have been working on them in the background of other projects as well. I did take them to Bendigo and knit on one of them there and I then also tried to do a second, the second one while the um, Nitty Natty Sock Week was happening but I did not quite finish it and realistically have not prioritised these since then. So these are them. <laughs> this is where we're at. This is the first sock that I took to Bendigo. This is the second sock that I tried knitting during Nitty Natty's uh, Sock Week. And I got pretty far. I got pretty close. The progress keeper, that's where I got up to at the end of sock week. On this second one. And now <laughs> I'm knitting these ones on my Addy Trios. Um, and on a 2.25 millimeter needle, these are fingering weight socks. So it's always a 2.25 for me. And uh, I'm loving knitting them on the Addy Trios. It's just a lovely process and I'm knitting them in tandem from the one ball of yarn I'm pulling from the outside oops dropped a needle and from the inside at the same time so this one's coming from the inside and this one's coming from the outside and I find I don't get too tangled up as long as I manage the yarn properly in the project bag it works quite well because I'm knitting these socks for my son these are on a 64 stitch count uh, that fits him quite well I am actually knitting these as a second sample of my design that I am trying to finish writing up. So they have a little uh, texture pattern on them that is really fun to knit. And I am trying to finish writing this up so I can finally get this pattern tech edited and test knit soon. These will be done by the 24th of August. That means the draft of the pattern should be done by then. And uh, once it's been tech edited, I will be calling for test knitters for this. So if you're interested at all in test knitting these socks for me, uh, please pop a comment down below. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably call out for test knitters via Instagram. That's going to be the easiest way to do it when I'm ready, because I'm not ready yet. It's a bit um, preemptive premature to be doing that now so yeah um, these are coming along beautifully they will be done by the next time I record for certain because they are a gift for my son uh, and also my second sample of my pattern my next work in progress and it is the last pair of socks that I will show you today uh, is a test knit that I am working on for my friend Kath of Mindful Melbourne Maker podcast this is my first Brisbane sock and this is a design that I'm testing for Kath of Mindful Melbourne Maker podcast and I am absolutely loving this. I started this sock on the 1st of August, today's the 10th, is that right? So yeah, that was a pretty quick knit in my mind given that I've been working on other things as well. But it's got a beautiful little chevron pattern on the front of the leg. And then that also follows through on the back. Kath includes a lot of different heel options in her patterns. Uh, this is the first pattern of hers that I am knitting and it has been a real joy. And she includes the Flegel heel in her designs. So I thought I'd try that. And this is the Flegel heel there. So that's sort of the area where the heel sits. And it is a really interesting construction. There are short rows, there are increases, there are no stitches to pick up. If that is something that you dislike about heel flap and gusset, this might be the heel for you. 
I don't mind a heel flap and gusset. I don't mind picking up stitches, but I did really enjoy the construction of this heel. And I've tried it on my foot and it feels great. I can't wait to actually be able to wear this sock though to get a real good feel for that heel. But I have loved knitting this sock. I actually ended up casting on the second one yesterday. So it's one of my tricks to stop um, second sock syndrome. Finish the first sock, start the second sock straight away. So I'm about five or six rounds into the um, ribbing of this second one here and it's going great. Now I am knitting these on my higher, higher, sharp Higher, higher, sharp. They're not crazy trios. Addy do the crazy trios. These are higher, higher flyers. So again, a three needle setup. So I'm using those for this pattern. For the leg, I'm using my Chowgu red lace needles. And I'm pretty sure this is a 40 inch cable in the 2.5 millimeter or US2 size. It's the only magic loop 2.5 needle that I had in my um, collection of needles. I don't have a 32 inch cord, which is my preferred length for a sock, but this is working fine. It, as you can see, it flew off my needles. I had a great time knitting this. Now, in terms of the yarn I am using, I did not share that. So I am using the mini is old, old stash by Ash and Oak Yarn, who no longer dye yarn, but some of my favorite Adelaide yarn that is in my stash from quite a few years ago and this is a superwash 80% superwash merino 20% nylon mini it is, the colorway is called star and I just thought it went really well with the main color that I chose which is gotten a bit messy in my bag so this is the main color that I'm using it is by whatnot who is also not dying currently but I pulled this out of my stash because uh, Kathy from Whatnot was actually dying from Queensland. I think she's on the break at the moment from dying. But this is yarn that was in my one of my advent calendars from a collaboration Whatnot did with Ash and Eve Designs uh, of back in 2020, I think. And I haven't used the main colour, but it is so pretty and I was so excited to use it for this pair of socks because they're called the Brisbane Socks. Brisbane is in the state of Queensland, if you're not in Australia, and this is where that this yarn was dyed. So I wanted to use something fun and summery that represented Brisbane. <laughs> so this is the colorway Toffee Apple. It is an 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon yarn. And I absolutely love how this is knitting up. Like, it's just so beautifully almost micro-striping on this pattern and it looks amazing I'm very very happy with that so that is my final work in progress no it isn't I've still got two more it's my final sock work in progress <laughs> that I am sharing with you today and I am loving knitting on this it is so addicting and Kath has done an amazing job with the pattern uh, it's been a pleasure and a joy to test knit for her so my next work in progress is a muscle borough hat. Um, so the muscle borough hat is a pattern by Yasolda Teague and I am knitting a DK weight hat here for my son who is really into my knits at the moment. This hat is being knit for my son who is absolutely loving his hand knits right now. I um, gave him a hat that I knit last year that I didn't really have a recipient for to wear to work and he loves that hat so much so he's been asking me for more hats and more socks because he's been really feeling the cold this winter and so i was at yarn trader my local yarn store a few weeks back this is i think at the beginning of july i picked up another skein of the york west yorkshire spinners color lab sock sock dk <laughs> yarn that i talked about that i did my husband's socks in and this is the colorway that i chose now the ball is a little bit flat because I've been pulling from the inside and this is called rock. I brought this home to my son and said, do you want socks or a hat out of this? And he said hat, definitely. So I cast on the muscle borough for him and this is the progress so far. 
actually let's show it here because it's quite large it is going really well and I'm using my new little progress not progress my little needle toppers for this project which are little dogs that look like my shorty and these I picked up from tea time retreats when I was in Bendigo the other month um, that I talked about in my last episode love these they're so cute I took this hat to the cinema last weekend to see a movie with my younger son this is going to be a present for my older one and I marked where I was at the start of that movie and that's the progress I made during that movie which was pretty good um, and yeah the yarn is knitting up beautifully there's a little bit of a um, pooling action going on but I really don't mind that and I don't think he's going to mind that at all it's just going to be a fun warm hat for him to wear to work and my aim is to use up the majority of this 150 gram bull now the muscle burra hat is written for your gauge and I've knitted in fingering weight before and I've not used a full 100 gram ball of fingering weight yarn though you could if you really wanted it very slouchy but for DK weight yarn, when I knit it last year, I didn't need more than one skein. So I ended up using a full skein and then some leftovers that I used on the inside. Uh, so this 150 gram ball will be perfect that I can just use as much of this as I want. And my aim is to use the majority of it. And I think from memory, I did weigh this when I got home from the cinema last week. I think I have about 50 grams left here, maybe maybe just un maybe just over actually maybe closer to 60 um so yeah i've knit definitely half of that now more than half and if you don't know the um muscle borough hat pattern which has been very popular in recent times it ends up being a big um football gherkin shape and you put half of it inside the other half and it's a double thick layer hat which again for my son his workshop is really cold where he works in winter let's see if I can make this do a hat thing so if you imagine I just need to knit this top equivalent and that will close it up and he'll have a hat I'll probably actually end up making it a bit longer though make it a bit slouchier so he can do a double a double brim on the ears if he wants to I feel like my lighting's gotten a little dark. Hopefully that's showing up okay. But yeah, that's the Muscle Burra hat. I'm knitting this on a 3.25 millimeter Addy, ne Addy needle on a 16 inch cord, or it's a 16 inch um, circular needle, fixed circular. Uh, and I'm really enjoying knitting on this when I need something very mindless in the round. Perfect cinema knitting perfect for when um, you don't want to concentrate on what you have to do because you're just going around and around and around so this has been great and I'm housing this one in my uh, by the lakeside bag my bunny bag by Sandy by the lakeside fits in there really nicely and uh, yeah that's been a fun project the last project I've been working on has been absolutely amazing i have been so obsessed with knitting on this project and i cannot wait to share this one with you i started this last friday friday night and then i ripped it out because i wasn't happy with it and then i restarted it saturday morning so this has been on the needles for a week so this is day eight today i think i haven't knit on it at all today um i was busy trying to do some laundry and get um, weekend jobs done before I started recording today. So I haven't done any knitting today. I did manage to get it on some try on tubing so I might be able to pop in some footage of me trying it on so far. But this is the Arbor Raglan and it's a pattern by White Owl Crochet Co or Molly, I can't remember Molly's last name, Molly Conrad of White Owl Crochet Co. And look at this texture I am loving this so much knitting it is pure joy and seeing the pattern come to life is just giving me all the feels I am 
adoring this project so much. Where do I start? <laughs> it's so good. Let's start with the yarn I am using. I am using Knit Picks Swish Worsted in the Squirrel Heather colorway. This is 100% fine superwash merino. It's 110 yards per 50 grams. It's considered a worsted weight, though I would say it's a bit of a light worsted given the yardage. Um, and it is really so soft. I've had this in stash for a few years. I think this was one of my first ever Knit Picks purchases back when I started, when I, when I found Knit Picks in 2019, 2020, 2019. Yeah, this has been in my stash for about four or five years now. I had always planned to knit the Weekender sweater by Andrea Maori in it, but I wasn't feeling it. I felt like the Weekender needed a different yarn. I wasn't really feeling this yarn for that sweater. The pattern combo, pattern yarn combo just wasn't working for me. Went on to Ravelry and had a look at what else has been knit out of this yarn to get some inspiration on a different design for it because I really wanted to use it up. And I found the Arbor Raglan pattern by Molly Conrad. And I was like, why are there so few projects on this Ravelry page? This is such a beautiful pattern. It is such a beautiful design. So I started looking at all the projects and fell more and more in love with them and absolutely had to cast on my gauge swatch right then and then, <laughs> right there and then. So I gauge swatched straight away. I did not meet gauge. I had to go down a needle size and still did not really meet gauge, but I was a little bit concerned that I might be playing yarn chicken with this one. So I only have 10 balls of this in stash. For my size, I needed 11 to 12 balls. A little bit worried, but not worried enough to stop me from casting it on. <laughs> when my gauge was a little bit loose, so this is written for I think a 4.5 millimeter or a US, US 7 needle. Um, I started my gauge swatch on that recommended needle. I could see straight away that it wasn't anywhere near the right gauge. So I went down to a four millimeter or a US 6 needle and um, did a bit more of the gauge swatch on that and that was close so i think it's a 19 stitches per four inches in pattern gauge um i was getting around 19 before blocking so after blocking it will stretch out so it'll be around 17 to 18 i have not blocked that swatch because again i could not wait to cast on but being a superwash yarn it will grow so my gauge will loosen up again once it's been washed so I decided that I would cast on, instead of the size three that I would measure for, I've cast on for the size two. And my goodness, I am absolutely loving knitting on this. Now, because I, I've, made a couple, I've made one adjustment so far and I think I'll be making a couple more. So I'll just let you know what adjustment I'm making. The pattern is written for a fold over uh, collar so it is beautiful it's stunning in the pattern but my concern about my yarn and my yardage meant that i was not willing to risk doing a double folded collar here so what i decided to do instead was do a tubular cast on which mimics sort of like a folded collar like it just the ribbing falls in or folds in on itself and you don't get that cast on edge per se so I did the tubular cast on. I used Andrea Maori's tutorial, which I love. I've always used that one for my tubular cast on. And um, yeah, I feel like when I measured how much yarn I used for the bit, for the half that I didn't need to fold over, uh, I saved myself a good 11, 12 grams of yarn, <laughs> which feels important right now when I'm feeling like I will be playing yarn chicken. So my aim, at the moment is to get to my sleeve separation which I'm not too far away from I do have some footage of me trying this on earlier today because I could not resist um, I feel like I just need to add another inch before I separate for the sleeves uh, and we will see how we go with this one but I am so excited to keep sharing the progress of it with you I feel like I might make a modification on the sleeve 
circumference. It's quite a billowy sleeve that then just has a rapid decrease for the cuff. And I feel like maybe I don't need it quite as billowy, so I might not do quite as many increases on the sleeve as would be required for my pattern. But I have an idea to adjust that. I just want to see. I want to get more familiar with that part of the pattern before I share what I will do there. It is a paid for pattern. Uh, I am like I'm, I think I've said it. I've definitely thought it. Um, totally underrated pattern. The pattern is written so well. There are so many hints and tips in this pattern. It is quite a few pages. I actually do have it printed out. Where is it? It's on the desk. Let me grab that. So I printed it out because I may be having to make some modifications and it's just easier sometimes to lay the paper out. But it is a sizable pattern. There are a lot of pages here. There are 24 pages in this pattern. But it is so good. Every size has its own chart and its own instructions so you can't go wrong you're not having to wing it um but i am just so impressed look how beautiful that is it is so stunning i am so excited to keep knitting on this it is such an enjoyable knit it is lace it's an eight stitch repeat um and it's also eight rows i think it's an eight by eight repeat and it just flies off the needles and this yarn combo is just perfection i am so happy that i kept looking on ravelry because this one didn't pop up on the first few pages i kept going page after page after page i think it wasn't till page four or five that i came across this particular one and i am so happy that i found it and i am so excited to keep working on it and to share that with you um definitely worthwhile checking the ravelry um pattern suggestions or projects that people have knit with certain yarns if you have a yarn in your stash and you're not quite sure what to use it for or you're not quite inspired to use it for what you thought you would use it for that search function in Ravelry is really quite amazing you can find some real gems in there so I do recommend that so uh, I think the only other thing to say is that I am knitting this I think I've told you I'm knitting this on the smaller needle size. So for the body, I did go down to a four millimeter or US six, but for the collar, I had done the same thing and gone down the same as I did for the body. But my first attempt at the collar was really tight. So I ended up ripping that out, which is why I cast on the Friday night and then I ripped it out and I start restarted again on the Saturday morning. Um, I actually found that using the recommended needle size for the collar, I, and I think that's a 3.25 millimeter, just gave me a much more comfortable fit around my neck. It was a little bit restrictive before. So love it. Absolutely love this and highly recommend this pattern if you're looking for um, a sweater for a worsted weight yarn with some interest or even a heavy DK or a light worsted, I would say would probably work for this. Yeah, I i am loving this design i am so happy i found it this is living in one of my um oh wow amsterdam bags that i picked up at yarn trader at some point recently i think i used a christmas voucher for this one so yarn trader lo logo there that's my local yarn store one of my local yarn stores i have two now and it's oh wow amsterdam it was a collaboration they did and this one's so pretty so perfect size for a sweater project those are all of my works in progress and i am so excited to work on each and every single one of them i am struggling right now to find enough knitting time for all of the knitting that i want to do everything is just really inspiring me i feel like the trip to bendigo has just reinvigorated this want for making again it was such an amazing experience that I talked about in my last episode and it's just the joy is flowing through me and I can't stop making all the things. <laughs> okay, so for plans. Oh, sorry, I kicked you. Let's move on to some a couple of plans that I have and things that I want to cast on as soon as I get at least one of those projects off the needles. My son's socks are probably the first ones that will come off. They're the closest. <laughs> Uh, but okay, first plan, and I talked about this one briefly in my Bendigo recap, but this is amazing Louis and Lola yarn that I picked up in Bendigo. 
and it's a kit for the Alma cardigan by Susanna Kartanen. Susanna Kartanen is an Australian designer of Finnish descent and uh, amazing. Sorry, the actual pattern is, I just realized, covered up by this pretty band. So there it is, the Alma cardigan. Now Susanna, Karina from Louis and Lola and Sarah from Bomb Yarns are hosting a knit along which starts this Thursday, I believe. I think it's the 15th of August. I I will pop it on the screen because I can't remember exactly. Pretty sure it's the 15th of August that this knit along starts. And uh, yeah, I am so excited to try knitting this. I talked about this in my last episode, but essentially it will be my first steaked garment. It is color work. Um, now I bought the kit with these two colors, but <laughs> then I saw that Karina posted some options of you, you can have more than one contrast color if you look at this picture you can see that there's a bit of a gradient happening there you can have more than one contrast color this kit only had the one but i ended up ordering two more colorways out of her collection when i saw that post and i'm waiting for those to arrive but they're sort of in the um, pinky tone so I'm really excited to see how they look with this yarn in person. Obviously I've seen photos, but it'll be really nice to see it in person. And I need to start swatching for this as soon as possible so I can cast on on the start date. So this is actually probably going to start before I finish anything, <laughs> but I am casting this one on this week. And then my other real wish list item, and I talked about this briefly when I was speaking about my um, Knit Picks yarn, is The Weekender by Andrea Maori, Audrea Renee Knits. She's just come out with a color work version of this that I can't remember the name of. It's her new Rhinebeck's, Rhinebeck sweater for this year, but she has just come out with a new version of this, but I am still really obsessed with trying to knit this one, which has been in my queue since I started knitting. And my aim for this is to knit it in some Bendigo, Bendigo haul. So I picked this up from the Great Ocean Road Woolen Mills. It's in a bag to keep it safe, but it is a 75% merino, 25% alpaca sports weight, sport weight yarn or five ply. And I have about 520 grams of it here. My aim is to hold it double because this is written for worsted weight. And we'll see how I go. I need to gauge swatch. I won't need to see if that will work. But right now, that is another big wish list item for me. I really can't wait to start that. Um, but I probably do need to finish something before I do that. And the final thing I wanted to show you that I've seen this week that I am really excited to get on my needles, but I don't have plans specifically to do that in the next few weeks, though it could end up jumping forward. It's the new pattern by Caitlin Hunter from Boylan Knitworks. It's the Stromboli. When I've printed out the pattern, you know that it's imminent because <laughs> I don't normally print out patterns. Normally I just use them on my um, Knit Companion app on my phone or on my iPad. But I had to print this one out because it's got a lot of charts as well and I am so excited to find some yarn in my stash, ideally, to knit this with. And it just, it just looks so pretty. And I'm a little bit obsessed with lace at the moment, apparently. Yeah. So those are my plans. All the knitting. I want to make all the things, as Sophie would say, from Cozy Meadow Knits. Now the last thing I wanted to share with you are some acquisitions. I'll run through these pretty quickly, but I did want to highlight a couple of things. I was driving home the other day from meeting a friend for coffee and there is a store, a yarn store on my way home that stocks um, a lot of Addy and I didn't really need any Addy at the time, but they have a lot of yarn that I'm not super familiar with working with. So I thought I'd stop in there and have a look and I actually ended up picking up my first ever Zauber ball. And I don't know what color this is because it's all in German, I think. I would say it's either 1153 or 2266. I'm not sure. 
but I also picked up this Lang Yawu yarn in the contrasting color. I thought these will make a beautiful sock for my husband potentially. Yep, so the Zalba ball is a 75% superwash, 25% nylon, and it is 420 meters per 100 grams. So it's got good solid yardage there. But I really did like those colors for my husband. And the Yawu, which I am so amazed. This is my first Yawu. <laughs> Yawu, Jawu, pretty sure it's Yawu. Either way, um, this is in the colorway, I think it's a number, 2133, perhaps that's the color number, but it's a beautiful sort of olive green that I think coordinates really well with this yarn. So I thought I'd give that a go. Uh, my first time buying this yarn, I can, I can see why people knit sweaters out of this. This is very wonderful to the feel. Uh, feels really really lovely uh, so I picked those two up and then I've had some happy mail as well and I subscribe to the yarnable subscription box uh, I don't I skip it many months but sometimes I don't skip it because either I love the colorway that I see in the sneak peek or I forget to skip <laughs> These two I actually consciously chose for them to arrive. So this one here is the June colorway. It's called I'm a Sucker For You. It's an 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 437 yards per 100 grams. It's like a succulent inspired colorway and I just thought it was so pretty. No idea what it'll be. Maybe socks. <laughs> And then the second one that has arrived is the July colorway, which is called Oh My Stars. Same base, really pretty. So those two arrived in the mail. And then one more mail item, which was which actually arrived the week after I came home from Bendigo and it was just so nice to come home to. <laughs> it is Louie and Lola's fifth birthday party sock set. This is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon fingering weight, 425 meters or 465 yards per 100 grams. And it's such a happy colorway. And the minis are so beautiful. Coordinate with it so beautifully. And the final thing I wanted to share with you is I mentioned we have two yarn stores in Adelaide now. So I had to go to the grand opening last week. It was such a fun day. I met up with my friend Marina from Handmade Koala and we visited Skein Machine. And so I had to pick up a couple of goodies. And the first goodie that I picked up is a Maximu Yarns Morning Tea colorway in the luxury sock base. And this is an 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. 400 meters per 100 grams and the other thing that I picked up was this beautiful fiber lily colorway in taupe or taupe taupe this is the super soft sock base 390 meters or 426 yards per 100 grams I'm not sure if that's coming across that's probably accurate right there this will be the base of my toaster tea this has a very specific plan and it will pair beautifully with something that I'm still waiting to arrive in the mail that I will show you next time. But the toaster tea is high on the list of want to make things. <laughs> Once the weather warms up in particular, I can't wait to cast one of these on. So those are all the acquisitions. So not too crazy. Oh goodness. So this has been a really long episode. I'm just looking at the recording time and it is excessive. So I hope that I can cut out some of my ums and ahs to make this flow a little bit better and condense it down a little bit. But there's been so much that I wanted to share with you today and I've had so much fun sharing everything that I am loving right now and have made and am making and want to make. It's been so good. A little bit of administrative stuff at the end here. Um, I am hosting the Use Your Sock Yarn Mail 2024 this year. 
and that is being hosted mainly on Instagram. There is also a Ravelry thread for that and I have a Google form for any finished objects that are finished in a month. I talk about this in depth in the first episode of the year uh, and I will link all of the details below as well. But I just wanted to mention that I have not pulled prizes yet for the first half. I am a terrible host. I will be doing that in the next week or so and I plan to record a separate episode to talk about that. But stay tuned, I will uh, definitely post that episode as soon as I possibly can. But I need to download the data and I think that's what's been holding me up. Because I'm using Instagram hashtags, pulling those randomly in a fair way is really challenging from Instagram because they don't all show up, not all the photos show up. So I use my data skills to get that out very specifically so I don't miss anyone who has posted on Instagram. For the um, actual finished objects though, that's easy. I can just pull through a uh, an output of all of the <laughs> submissions, but I just haven't quite got there yet. To be honest, I've just been wanting to knit. I don't wanna spend more time in front of the computer than I have to. So when I'm home, if I'm not doing housework, cooking, cleaning, then my priority is knitting. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that will be coming soon though. So keep an eye out for that, uh, especially if you're participating. And if you haven't participated yet, it's not too late to join. It's a free make along. Uh, just use the hashtag, use your Sokyan Mel 2024 on any Instagram posts. If you finish a project using sock yarn and sock yarn, very loose definition, DK weight, fingering weight, whatever works for you, as long as you would knit socks with it, I don't really mind what yarn you're using. But if you finish a project within the calendar month, you can enter in for physical prizes. The Instagram hashtag I'm pulling for pattern prizes of your choice on Ravelry. And yeah, I will announce some winners very shortly for the first, for the first half. So I did first quarter announcements in episode 23 or 24, 24 maybe. I'm still waiting for two people to contact me back. So if you have been hashtagging your uh, posts on Instagram and you missed that episode, check it out. Otherwise I'll have to redraw. And I will probably actually, let, let's give a deadline. I'll give it till the 31st of August and then I will uh, pull some extra winners from that first quarter prize draw that I made if I don't hear from those two people. I have reached out to them on Instagram and I still haven't heard from them, so I think hopefully they will contact me. I don't really have many life updates. I think, like I said, it's work, knitting, work, knitting. So I'm heading to the Mount Pleasant Fleece and Fibre Fair tomorrow uh, with my husband. We're going to go for a drive. It's going to be a beautiful sunny day and I'm so excited for it. Even just the day out will be really nice. We'll probably get some lunch while we're out as well. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Work, life, knitting. What else is there? <laughs> Should be more knitting time though. That would be nice. I'm sure I've forgotten to say something really important. If you like this video, please click the like button. It really helps this channel to be seen by other makers that may be interested in this content. And if you uh, have made it this far, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I know how many amazing things there are to do and see and watch. <laughs> I am struggling to keep up with all the things as well. So if you've chosen to stick around with me for this long, I really do appreciate you. I forgot to say at the start as well, uh, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, I am so happy that you've chosen to join me today. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Thank you so much for your support over this period. It's been so lovely to be able to connect with a bunch of you in the comments. So if you are still here, let me know what you've been working on. Have you been knitting? Have you been baking? Have you been getting ready for work? Have you been cooking dinner? <laughs> <laughs> These are some of the times that I watch a lot of my podcasts. I try to do it when I'm knitting mostly, but there's not enough knitting days or knitting hours in the days to be able to do all the things. So I try to catch up with my favorite podcasts in and around everything else that I'm doing. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much. I will sign off there. This has been excessively long to record, so I dare say it'll be pretty long to watch. <laughs>
<laughs> but thank you so much and I look forward to chatting with you soon. I will try not to leave it as long so it's not such a long episode. Take care, happy knitting and I'll see you soon.